So I gotta admit guys, I've been pretty salty this week because I initially looked at Void 3.0, I was very excited, especially because I main a Void Hunter in many cases, but then I looked at some of the changes within Void 3.0 specific to Hunters, I thought, man, are we getting screwed? And primarily because in a lot of end game content, I use things like Omnoculus, which with Heart of the Pack, which is going away with Void 3.0, and I would use that in many of my builds, specifically around Omninoculus and things like that, especially endgame content to buff myself and my fire team. So again, I was kind of bummed about that. And if you follow this channel for any period of time, you'll know that when I first started doing builds, I first did builds around Sick Coyote. And honestly, at that point, I was one of the few people actually making builds like this. So I did those, and then when Omninoculus came out, I did a ton of builds around Omninoculus. And then this year, I've actually kind of delved into other play styles, other classes, but I've always, in my heart, been a void night stalker ever since d1 but then i thought about it and did a little bit of analysis and i actually think i'm cautiously optimistic that actually void night stalker don't get me wrong all the void not subclasses are going to be great in the witch queen there's a lot of great utility with them but i actually think void night stalker can specifically be that perfect class i need especially when i'm trying to solo end game content or when I'm trying to help my fire team complete endgame PvE content. Let me explain a little bit more what I mean by that. First off, some people initially reacted. One thing, you need to understand how to play Void Night Stalker, and not everyone does. And I will say this, when they're making videos, Void Night Stalker is a strong neutral class that does a lot of support. So it's not exactly the sexiest thing to make a video out of, right? On the other hand, it's very sexy and very easy to make a video about some of the new Warlock abilities, where you can basically chain abilities, you can be up all the time, you can have these little buddies that go and kill things, especially with the Titan 2 where you can do stuff with Overshield, but with Hunter it's not nearly as easy. One of the things about playing the Void Night Stalker is that it requires a great deal of skill. And, and what I mean by that, that's not to say that the other classes don't take skill, because I play all the, the classes. But with Void Night Stalker, it's about positioning, it's about using your abilities to chain on top of each other, because there's a lot of great utility if you use your melee, your smoke bomb, your dodges in the right way, where you can actually have uptime that allows you to do a lot of great things besides just turning invisible, which invisible is a great thing for the fire team. But obviously, Heart of the Pack losing that, that is a loss, but think about it this way, and I'll talk about it here in a little bit. Basically, what you're talking about is having all the invisibility, and in fact, enhanced invisibility, from all the things that you currently have on your Night Stalker, all the abilities. But you also have the ability to do Devour and do Overshield, which you have not been able to do in the past. The other thing that's a nice addition is now, whenever you use your Smoke Bomb or the new Quick Fall, which you basically do like a, a Smoke Bomb, which again, makes your allies invisible, it also puts a Weaken effect on all of the enemies that are nearby. And this is where this is powerful. So think about it. You already had the invisibility ability to dodge, get your Smoke Bomb back, re-dodge, buff your allies and things like that. But now you can also weaken enemies that are nearby. When you have enemies that are weakened, so if you have enemies that are weakened, and let's say you're using Stylus Executioner, then if you kill those enemies, you get Invisibility and True Sight. So again, that's really useful. And then afterwards, if you melee, and it doesn't even talk about being a powered melee, if you melee an enemy, they become weakened again. So there's this big loop with the Hunter now, where they can control the battlefield using Weaken, which obviously confuses and, and kind of staggers your enemies. Think of it like Oppressive Darkness, and you get a 15% debuff that allows you to do additional damage to your enemies. You know, one of the main complaints that I've had with the Hunter when you're trying to do endgame content, especially if you're trying to do something solo or if you're in some sort of low man thing, activity, is that it's great to go invisible, it's great for the fire team, you can buff people, right? You can do a good support class, but it's hard to stay alive outside going invisible. And even invisible, you can get shot. Now having things like Overshield and Devour will also then allow you to not spend as many points on things that protect you as far as mods and things like that, which will allow you to further spec out your builds. So I think the build crafting with this is gonna be incredible. I think it will be more difficult with the Hunter to make sure you have a quality build, but I think if you plan it out and if you know how to play Hunter, because I think some of the people commenting this don't know how to play a Hunter properly. I think if you know how to play Hunter, use your dodges, use your abilities to chain on top of each other, I think there's some really powerful things that you can use within PvE as well. The other thing is that you obviously have Deadfall, and Deadfall is a great super in that it will allow you to attract a bunch of enemies in one area, and potentially that you can generate orbs out of that and you can get good crowd control. Moby's Quiver is also good. Moby's Quiver is good 
for doing DPS if you can hit it in a row. But one of the problems is you kind of stay in the air, and if you're in a GM or something, you're dead, right? You're just going to get shot out of it. I haven't seen it, obviously, in gameplay, but the plan is, is that you would basically, instead of doing all of your tethers, you would do two shots of tethers, each with three arrows, which if you look in the Viadoc and some of the information they show, that has very good crowd control. The other thing is it actually makes the enemies volatile. And so with Volatile, if after Volatile, if you do weapon damage to them, eventually they'll explode. So if you think about the opportunity with this, you'll be able to do a ton of crowd control and you'll be able to kill a ton of adds really easily. And when they explode with the tether, you're also gonna generate orbs off of that. So not only are you you're controlling the crowd, you're more easily doing your tether because right now tether's useless. This will also be better in PVP because it's quicker, right? But you'll be able to generate a ton of orbs for your fire team and I can see a lot of builds where you could potentially even add to this with orb generation elemental well mods to make this pretty incredible build that will help you and your entire fire team. The other thing I want to talk about briefly is that one of the hunter exotics that's been dead for a long time is Orpheus rigs. Now Orpheus rigs used to be the key back in Destiny 2 at the very beginning, right? How many times could we be at like Argos and we're trying to generate a lot of orbs. People do supers, take them out quickly. And you'd have a t you'd have a tether down. And you're generating so many orbs. People get like four or five golden shots, golden gun shots, or other things on the boss really easily. So it was great back then, but then it was nerfed. It was nerfed in that you didn't get your super back. You only got 50% of your super back, no matter what you did on that orb generation. And again, that's with Deadfall. But one of the the things you could do now with Moby's Quiver is where you can do the two volleys of three arrows. Now you'll be able to do three of them with Moby's Quiver. Now. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that's basically going to be nine arrows. So I'm curious about two things. One, with that, if you have a bunch of adds in the area and you make them volatile with that and then you destroy them, think about all the orbs that could generate potentially, right? That's that's pretty incredible. Second, with those volleys, what I'm trying to be curious is, is that supposedly the three arrows track on targets. Well, if there's a bunch of adds, obviously they'll track on the adds. What happens if it's a boss? So if you've ever done Mobius Quiver on a boss, you know that it actually does decent damage. If you hit you hit with the first tether, then the second tether, and the third tether, it kind of builds on top of each other. What if you could get all nine of those to hit, right? And it happens a lot quicker. So the DPS possibilities are pretty much endless where you could you know, hit them with all the tethers. That would also be a 30% uh, debuff. It would be short, but it will allow your enemies, especially in a short DPS phase, to do additional damage, which they could also stack on top of well, right? So you could see sort of the things that could happen. You have lots of possibilities for orb generation, potentially more DPS, ton of crowd control, and then with the ability to lean into Titan and Warlock abilities that you don't have access to, you can finally get past the fact that sometimes the Void Hunter, even though it's a great support class, is squishy in a lot of end game content. Well, that's the video, guys. We'll see you in a week when Witch Queen goes live and I'm right or not. And I may not be, but like I said, I do know, and that's why I had to temper my reaction. I do know often we have a reaction to things that people put in the TWAB. And I'll be honest with you, Bungie it isn't always the best at communicating everything that's happening in the game. And sometimes they intentionally undersell stuff so people are wild when the release comes out. So we'll wait and see. But I actually think Void Hunter, again, if you're a skilled Hunter player and know how to chain abilities, is actually going to be a lot more powerful than it is today, both in PvE and in PvE content. That's the video, guys. If you liked it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, jump into my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.